Real quick before the video starts, if you guys may or may not know, we have playmats for our Nexus Core and you can get them at inkgaming.com. We have the Vanguard Zone design, which is like a sorted colors, white and black, which you guys can take a look at and see what other colors you think would look great for your own map that you can take home. And then there's like a Nexus Core specific design, which is the one that I use in the videos. What do you guys think? If you guys want to pick up these mats, they're up on inkgaming.com. It would support me and the channel and the rest of the guys a lot. And if you guys have any ideas or feedback you want to give on the mat designs are already up there, you can join the Nexus Core Discord where I post my updates and design ideas ideas for work. It'd be great to get your guys' feedback on what type of designs you'd want to see in the future. So thanks again for those who have already picked up some Nexus Core maps. I already appreciate that a lot. And without further ado, here's the rest of the video. Welcome back guys to another deck profile. I'm Richard and today we got Jewel Knights. So we got new support from the Clan Collection Volume 3 with more OG Jewel Knight support. So everyone remembers Ashley Salome from Break Right Era, and now we got it in V-Series. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys my list for my uh, Jewel Knight focused V-Premium deck. Starting off with our starter, like always, any of the Royal Paladin starters work, they're all not really specific to this deck, but Glimey Boy, Shiny Glime, love my Shiny Glime. All right, going on to our grade threes, we're running four copies of leading Jewel Knight Salome. So, Salome's skill is at the end of the battle that attack, you count plus one, you choose any number of your jewel knights from your hand, and you call them to rear guard circles with units already on them. Then if you call three or more, you soul plus four and you restand this unit, and it doesn't lose any drive checks. So the main th key thing about this is there is a very limited amount of jewel knights in the deck, uh, just, just because that's how many are printed. So that's just something you should keep in mind for when you're planning out your turn, but the idea is have three Jewel Knights in hand, call them during the battle phase on the things that are already filled, and restand. The second skill is when your other unit's placed on this unit's circle, van or rear, you can count them last one, that unit gets 10k and an extra drive check. So if you ride Salome on top of Salome, you can count them last one, get a third drive check, and that's until the end of the turn, meaning that when this restands, you get another triple drive. So that's another thing to keep in mind about how aggressive this deck can get. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for Salome's whole thing. Main thing is that you just have to keep in mind it's calling to units that have are already on a circle. And next up, because we're maxing out all the Jewel Knights we can run in this deck, we're running four copies of Pure Heart Jewel Knight Ashley. Ashley's a great card. It works great on Van and Rearguard Circle. Its first skill is Van or Rear. At the end of the battle that it attacked, you Soul Blast 2. Search your deck for up to one grade 2 or less card with Jewel Knight in its name. Call it to rear. And if this is on the Vanguard circle, you call two instead of just one. So you can call to front row grade twos or make a column with a grade two and a booster just for Soul Blast 2. This deck fills Soul really easily too, so the cost isn't that high. Uh, Van or rear, when your other unit is placed on this unit circle, you kind of lost one. Give that unit an extra crit. So if you Riot, Salome on top of Ashley on Van, Cannon Blast 1, Salome gets an extra crit, and then it restands with an extra crit. So you can be aggressive that way. It works on rear, so if you call something from the deck on top of uh, Ashley, you can give it an extra crit to push for game. And just a super like offensive deck. Um, I would say you could play either Force 1, Force 2, depending on how aggressive you want to be. Force 2 is definitely if you're really trying to like ride Ashley, put a Force 2 on our rear, and then ride Salome on top, and then give your Vanguard a crit just to make everything have an extra crit when it swings. That's a way to do it as well. So I definitely like how there's some diversity in this deck. Next up, or lastly for our grade threes, four copies of our Heal Guardian, Innocent Ray Dragon. So Innocent Ray, Heal Guardian like all the rest, it's when it's placed on the guard circle, if you haven't ridden to grade three, choose one of the following. Give your Vanguard an extra 10k for the turn, or pick one of your opponent's attacking units, it gets minus two crit. So, prevents you from being rushed. Second skill, when it's placed on rear from hand, if you have no damage, you put the top card of your deck into your damage zone. So, helps you. Uh, it does have less shield than the traditional vanilla heal, but because this is a more like early game card, and this is searchable uh, from Sicilis, so you can help you, it can help you defensively as well. So, definitely think that heal guardians are the way to go for this deck. 
Now we're moving on to grade twos, starting off with a new unit from volume three. Dogmatized Jewel Knight Sybil. This was a card from OG Jewel Knights as well. So Sybil's skill is Vanner Rear. When it attacks, you put a grade two or less card from your hand to the soul, you draw a card. It fills your soul, and if you have noticing your hands not filled with Jewel Knights and you need to kind of filter and find some Jewel Knights, Sybil's a great way to help you do that. Second skill is when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle, Vanna Rear. Look at the top three, search for a Jewel Knight, grade two or less Jewel Knight, call it to rear, put the rest on the bottom. So this is a great ride target because you can ride it, then ride Ashley or Salome on top. Look at top three, call a Jewel Knight. Super easy. And then obviously, since you're using Salome's skill to call units on top, you call a Jewel Knight on top of this, and then you use uh, Sybil's skill to look at top three and hopefully find another Jewel Knight to call. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's mostly we need the Jewel Knight name <laughs> for Salome to work. Moving on to grade twos, the other grade two Jewel Knight, Explode Jewel Knight Lily. Lily's skill is rear when it attacks. You pick two normal units from your drop, put them back in the bottom of your deck, soul charge one, and it gets 5k. So it's recycling so you can have more Jewel Knights in the deck. So that way you don't really worry about running out for Salome's skill. Banner rear, uh, when your other unit's placed on this unit's circle, it gets an extra 10. So like I said, if you're playing force two, you have this on a rear guard circle and you call something on top of it, it gets an extra 10. So it has the 10K and the force two, so it can still be aggressive. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Lily is just kind of like a, a 15K beater and it can help you make your numbers bigger because you have to call on top of the other unit circles with Solomon. All right, moving on to the next set of grade twos. Four of my favorite Royal Paladin card, Absolute Blade Knight Livero. I love this card because its cost is payable no matter what situation you're in. Its skill is if you have no face of cards in your damage zone, you pay the cost with Soul Blast 1 instead of Counter Blast 1. So when this is placed on Banner Rear, you Counter Blast 1, search your deck for a grade two, call it to an open rear guard circle, shuffle your deck. So if you have all face down damage, you just pay a Soul Blast. So this is great if you ride it and you have no damage for whatever reason, or you know, you wanna call it later after using the skill of like Rabble or or another unit that counter blasts, or if you're using Salome's skill and then, you know, for the drive check and then you wanna call out Livero and you're not really pushing for game that way. There's definitely situations you can find yourself where you don't need to use the Soul Blast or like using Morbidus' skill or the Counter Blast to fill your soul and give something 5k. So I like how Libero works no matter what. And they also got reprinted. So if you're planning on picking these up, these just got reprinted in the Clan Collection Volume 3. So these are back in circulation if you want to pick these up. And then speaking of more cards that are reprinted in Volume 3, I'm running one copy of Knight of Chivalry Rabble. This used to be a promo, but now it's in a main set. Um, when this unit's placed on rear during your main phase, you kind of blast one, put a grade two, a non-grade two rear guard to the bottom of your deck, so you can put triggers back if you want. Uh, you draw two cards and then you pick a card from your hand and you call it. So it helps you put cards back in your deck, put triggers back in your deck, it helps you draw two, so you can maybe draw two more Jewel Knights for Solomon's skill, and then you call something. So I really like Rabble as a card. It's just that, yeah, it costs a Counter Blast, and I feel like um, there aren't going to be any more opportunities where you're really going to be able to go Counter Blast and deliver up, Counter Blast and a Rabble, and then Counter Blast for Solomon's skill. It's just like kind of hard to work around. So the one Rabble still works, and it's searchable. So I like it. Plus, we gotta make more room for the rest of our Jewel Knights, so that's another reason why. Moving on to Grade Ones, starting off with another new card. Four copies of Fru Fruiting Jewel Knight Eunice. Eunice. <laughs> I can't read today. Uh, Regret skill. At the end of the battle, that this boosted, put a normal unit from your drop to the bottom of your deck, Soul Charge 1, bounce it back to hand. So that can help for a Solomon skill to call Jewel Knights from your hand. But then the key thing is you have to call them onto units with circles on them. So you have to kind of decide, are you gonna keep this 
on the board so you can call something on top of it or are you going to bounce it and save it for later do you want to use it as shield because it's a 10k shield and you can bounce it back to hand so it's a pretty good card for the most part so the skill is vander rear when another unit is placed on this unit's circle choose one of your opponent's rigors in the same column that this unit was in uh, and you retire it but if there's no units that you can retire you just get to draw a card so it's a great right target because you ride this you ride a grade two another unit placed on this top of this unit nothing to retire you draw a card easy peasy so definitely like Eunice for that reason it's similar to Morbidus in terms of like where you ride it you can just draw a card so every grade one in this deck is a great ride target so there's a lot of consistency with this deck and speaking of Morbidus, we're going on to her next four copies of Charging Jewel Knight Morbidus. Morbidus' skill is Act, uh, Counter Blast 1, put a normal unit from your drop to the bottom of your deck, Soul Charge 1, choose a Jewel Knight, and it gets 5k. You can obviously choose herself too if she's the only Jewel Knight on the board, but you can kind of use it to make some columns a little bit bigger. The second skill is when your other unit's placed on this unit's circle, you draw a card. So even if you have to call something on top of this with Salome, you're at least getting something back out of it by drawing a card. So Morvis is great. And obviously you have to maximize the Jewel Knights, but this is a great card to run in general because the skill works on banner rear. Then you place on this circle, draw a card. Easy. So I really like the grade one lineup for this deck. And finishing off with that great old lineup. Four copies of Laurel Knight, Sisyllus. It's our great three searcher. Uh, during your turn, if you have no face of damage, it gets uh, 5k power. And because we counter blast a lot, you're definitely gonna get there. Uh, and then when it's placed from hand, van or rear, look at top five, search for grade three, add it to hand. If you did add a card, you discard a card from your hand. So this can help you search either Jewel Knight, Ashley, or Salome, depending on which one you're like trying to look for when you ride it, or also just finding Jewel Knight targets to have in hand for your um, Salome turn to call things. And it can search your Heal Guardians, if I haven't mentioned that already. So four of Sicilis. There's kind of like, the deck is kind of very obvious with what the lineup should be. And that's what I kind of like about it. But I know some people don't like decks that are kind of cookie cutter, straightforward. Like you have to play the deck this way or it doesn't really work. But if you're looking for something really simple, I think Jewel Knights is a really great deck to build. So then moving on to their grade zero triggers, four PGs, um, PGs that are draws because uh, Sentinel crits, I feel like, don't really help the deck and you want to be able to draw cards to fill your hand with Jewel Knights. So that's one of the reasons why I think you definitely want to have draws, and it's a PG. And also the, the Jewel Knight PG from uh, Limit Break, or Break Right Era, was flashing Jewel Knight Isolt. So we're, we're kind of still picking up on the, the Jewel Knight aesthetic with Isolt. And the rest... Of my trigger lineup is eight crits but i just kind of like split it up to different artworks so i just got my three Lou's, my three epinas and my my flogals eight crit they're all vanilla i would like to say though that um if you would like this is definitely something you can do you can do six crit two draw like the vanilla draw like run margle or something and that way you could have more opportunities to draw cards for searching out your Jewel Knights for those combos. So definitely think that that's something that would be an interesting take. I'm going to try that out soon. Um, but I've just been kind of seeing that more people are going for the crit deck because obviously you want to see crits. You give a crit to, to your Vanguard, it restands, you attack an extra crit. If you're playing Force 2, getting extra crits just to do your opponent damage obviously is going to be a more aggressive way to play the deck so i get that but if you're looking for like a more conservative way you can maybe also do like you know seven crit five draw you know these are just different ways you can go around playing with this deck um but yeah so that's pretty much it for the deck profile um if you guys have any other suggestions for me or are excited for any other v decks that you want to see matchups with this deck for just let me know what you guys want to see in the comment section so that we can show you guys how these decks work um yep that's pretty much it thanks again for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye